it is my pleasure to present you this uh, teamwork in the name of uh, all the members of the iTrust Safety Committee. Uh, all together, we, we worked on uh, estimating the maximum acoustic transmission through the human skull. And we believe this might have interesting applications for all the transcranial biomedical ultrasound application, and especially for uh, ultrasound uh, neurostimulation. Uh, we actually uh, wanted to uh, discuss how to estimate the pressure inside the skull. You know that the pressure inside the skull during transcranial ultrasound depends, of course, on the, the shape of the transducer, uh, the location of the focus, the frequency that is being used, but also it depends whether you are actually uh, performing transcranial focusing without correction or with correction. Um, so estimating the uh, the pressure field inside the brain is not so simple. Uh, we wanted to uh, to know if it, we could at least use a conservative estimation of the maximum pressure inside the the brain. First option is, for example, to use uh, the FTA derating uh, that takes into account the tissue absorption for the diagnostic ultrasound. Uh, the drawback is that it, it is tissue independent. Uh, it's very conservative, but it does not take into account the specificity of the screening of the skull. So it, we might consider it as conservative, but too uh, conservative. One can also develop 2D or even better 3D transcranial simulations in order to estimate the pressure field inside the, the brain. Uh, but the problem is that the, those techniques are not available to all the uh, transcranial ultrasound users. So we propose uh, the third option to, to uh, uh, here develop a realistic and yet very conservative model of transcranial transmission. So what we did is that we uh, modeled the skull uh, as a, a three-layer model, so skin, skull, and brain. And we considered also, of course, the impedance mismatch, but also the absorption inside the, the skull. And we estimated the transmission of pressure. Here you see you, that we have a, a first term based on the transmission of the wave through the skull. And then we take into account also the reflections inside the skull um, that are going to suffer also from each interface, but also from the, the absorption of uh, of the ultrasound crossing the skull three times in that case. And then uh, the, the, the third reflection and the third transmission through the, uh, the skull. So we end up with a series of, of terms that we can rearrange and calculate actually. So we end up with a, a, a complex uh, formula, uh, but still that we can use of the transmission of the ultrasound to uh, uh, a layer of skull that has a, a given thickness L. In order to uh, uh, determine the attenuation that we would inject in, in our model, we looked in the literature. Um, several models have been um, used in the past, and we actually used uh, the as a conservative value this value, 83 nepper per meter and per megahertz, that is actually the lower bound of all the absorption modeling that have been uh, used in, in the past and that have been measured through the scale. Uh, when doing so, our formula gives us actually the, the transmission as a function of the thickness of the skull. You see that as the skull is, is thicker and thicker, we see that the attenuation decreases exponentially due to the absorption, but we see also that we have peaks here due to standing waves in the thickness of the, of the skull. This is a dependence of the transmission as a function of the thickness of the skull. It also depends, of course, not only on the thickness, but also on the ultrasound frequency. So you have here for a given thickness of bone, this is typically a transmission that we would have as a function of thickness and frequency. So we also developed a pipeline to compute actually the skull thickness on 20 uh, skulls automatically. So we interpolated the uh, CT scans we had access to. Uh, we thresholded uh, the, the data uh, to determine a mask. And, and we, thanks to ray tracing, 
we looked at the uh, the thickness of the of the skull bone here. So you have here okay, a three D map of the the thickness of the of the bone here for one given skull, and we determine the transmission due to the formula by using the formula I, I showed you before. This is the transmission and percentage through the skull uh, for three different frequencies. So you see a very heterogeneous transmission of the of the ultrasound. Most of the time, we use uh, not very small transducers, but transducers that are given a diameter. So here is actually the averaging effect of using either a 20 millimeter diameter transducer or a 60 millimeter diameter transducer. So again, you see for the same skull, the impact here on uh, the transmission of the ultrasound, where we take into account both the um, the frequency and also the size of the transducer. So then depending where the transducer is located, transmission will, will be uh, higher or smaller. And what we did is that for all those configurations, we determined the, 50, uh, the 95th percentile in, in order to determine what is the maximum transmission realistically that is transmitted through the skull for a given frequency and a given beam, beam uh, ultrasound beam diameter on the skull surface. Uh, we did so on 20 skulls, for, so considering more than 1.4 million points. And those are the transmissions that, that we obtained. Uh, in order to compare with the data that are available in the literature, uh, we found a couple of papers that measure the different frequencies with a given ultrasound beam diameter, uh, the transmission coefficient. You have the values here. Uh, so we have the same tendency. Uh, the transmission is higher for low frequencies and also uh, here for smaller transducers. And you see that the experimental values are actually lower than what we estimate here, and which is uh, in line with a conservative approach, providing us some data about the maximum transmission that we estimate through the scope. I would like to uh, thank here all the, the members of the uh, iTrust safety committee that uh, contributed to, uh, to this work. And we hope that, that uh, this will be useful to the users, um, a, a simple way to estimate the, uh, the transmission through the skull once you know the frequency you're using and the uh, beam diameter. Thank you for your attention.